Welcome to episode 11 of Successful Demo. In each episode, we analyze the theoretical and practical aspects of one more newly released cards. We are looking at the no, no longer teenager, uh, completely unmutated, and not much of a ninja at all. Turtle, it's Almaqua. This is a criminal, AI breaker. It's a virus, surprisingly, not an anarch one. Whenever you expose a card or access cards and do not steal or trash them, you get an extra virus counter on Almaqua, which boosts its strength by one per virus counter, and you can break subroutines uh, for one credit a sub. You cannot pump this breaker, and it's based zero strength. Well, so when you look at this card immediately, you see the very long first paragraph, and you're like, okay, what does this card synergize with? Infection cards. It seems like this is a very criminal card for the first paragraph, and immediately you think of uh, the two different ways you can go about building a deck around Almaqua. If you decide to synergize with the access and do not steal or trash, you can combine this with Enius and Foreman. That way, every time you check a naked remote and choose not to trash something, you gain Enius credits and one strength on Almaqua. The problem with this is, um, of course, if you are up against a non-asset spam deck where you cannot reliably access cards, um, well, good luck, you are not going to be able to get money and you can't charge your Almaqua. The more reliable way to build around Almaqua is with the first clause, whenever you expose a card. So you can combine this with Snitch, which is rather reliable as long as your opponent isn't running res effects, which most corp decks aren't, let's be honest. So Almaqua and Snitch, and of course, if you're running Snitch, you're running Au Revoir as well. Gotta get this played before they rotate out, yes, Snitch is um, in the first two cycles, so beware of that. Yep, uh, so... We are going to try to build an Almaqua Snitch Au Revoir deck. Let's look at the pros and cons. Almaqua is only one influence. Very important to keep in mind. Even though it synergizes with Prim cards, you can theoretically splash this, and it's very, very cheap. Being a program, all you need is one copy, really, and it's just one influence. It's one per sub. This is a very premium break rate, considering that you are not spending money to pump strength. Therefore, uh, it, you know, something like an Artman. Uh, it, which is very efficient on high strength ice. If you can get Almaqua to high strength, it is super efficient on big ice. 3 to install is very cheap. Um, think of another AI breaker that's 3 to install. There you go, Faust, OP as hell. Almaqua should be the same, right? Not to mention that this could be a main breaker just like Faust. Um, if you're running Snitch plus Au Revoir, uh, one of the big problems is that by the time you set up the entire Snitch Au Revoir combo, your opponent is well on their way to victory. If you need to set up a regular breaker suite, Fractal Decoder Killer on top of that, you're too slow. Almaqua solves that. Um, and when I say Snitch Au Revoir, you're probably thinking of a very uh, of a deck that I might have played um, in one of the previous successful demos. Um, in that, I use Snitch Au Revoir with Maven. Now, this um, compares very favorably with Maven. Um, it's half the cost to break per ice subroutine, and it's three to install instead of five. So yeah, Almaqua basically trumps Maven if you ignore the one glaring downside of Almaqua. What do you do against an instant speed purge? Cyberdex Virus Suite is not an uncommon card, and that completely, utterly wrecks Almaqua. If you, if you thought Darwin was completely hosed by CVS, well, have I got an Almaqua for you? Um, this is arguably worse than the Whale, because at least with the Whale, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> not much to say, I guess, and yeah, both of them are pretty bad because they lose the strength on Perch and there's no way to pump those breakers. So you are left potentially fa uh, face checking a nasty ice that you can't deal with. Therefore, Almaqua is a bit of a problem in that it can't really be a main breaker because you need backup breakers in case Almaqua gets purged in which case you lose the main benefit of it being a main breaker anyway. So you have a bit of trouble there. Not to mention that um, another way which corpse can deal with you if they don't run CVS in their deck is simply to just regular purge you, followed by trying to score out next turn behind a high strength ice. Um, Almaqua requires clicks to gain uh, strength uh, virus counters. Even if you're a snitch and au revoiring every single turn, every single click of your turn, you might not get to the correct strength in time, and this could be really tricky in a world with lots of high strength ice. However, um, as I mentioned, uh, as I yeah, kind of alluded to earlier, I'm looking back at my successful demo where I uh, played Maven and Daredevil 
with the Snitch Orva combo. And by swapping out the Maven for the Omaqua, I realized that this deck actually already solves a lot of these problems. Let's have a look at that. So we have this Ayla deck. Um, this is the deck that I'm going to play today on the left. And on the right are the changes that I made since the last successful demo. You'll notice that in the previous successful demo, we were using a very varied Breaker Suite. We had Maven, sure, but we w it was also well supported by the regular Breakers. Uh, Nanotech, we have Snowball for the Fractor, and Inversificator, which is on the left, uh, is still in my deck. So this allows me to cover most of the problematic ice. However, uh, why is it that I can now switch to Omaqua and have it as my main breaker without needing the Fractor or the Killer? Let's look at the AI hate ice for that. These are the ice in the game that hate our AI programs. Um, Bulwark's not here because that's really irrelevant. Now let's look at these ice one, one by one and see whether our deck can deal with them. Shiashi is fine because by the time you set up in the mid to late game, you don't really care about the rest of the deck because you, are making, you don't need to draw cards to make money or break ice, so Chiashi is fine. Similarly, IP block, you have a hate card for it, it's called New Angeles City Hall and it works just fine. Um, Wrap Round and Conundrum are a bit problematic because they gain strength when you, have an uh, when you don't have a main breaker. But that's fine also, because Omaqua can theoretically go up to infinite strength. As long as you are able to maintain a high strength from Omaqua, or regularly force purges from your opponent, you can usually break Wrap Rounds and Conundrums fairly easily. Finally, with Swordsman, this one's a tricky one, but there are ways around it in the shape of faction. Uh, net damage is rather irrelevant, and you can even play Feedback Filter if you must. The Trash Program is painful, since it's your only and main breaker, Omaqua, but you have Sacrificial Construct in your deck. So I actually went up to 3 sac cons. Not only does this uh, protect me against Swordsman for a couple of runs, it also um, boot, uh, doubles up as Clot Defense. So, I mean, yeah, it's keeping the Clot on the board. So uh, that basically gets past the Swordsman problem, leaving us with only Hortum and Turing as the so-called Hard Stopper Ice. Turing is more of a soft stopper because you can click through it, but you really don't want to be doing that. These two have ender runs that you cannot break, and this is why I chose to keep Inversificator in the Ayla deck. We need Inversificator to deal with um, Turing and especially Hortum. Um, it also, Inversificator also gives us the bonus of being able to rearrange pro potentially problematic ice, like Wraparound as mentioned earlier, onto less important servers. So this is one of those examples where you can pack um, necessary hate cards like uh, more regular breakers or something like Egret. I know some of you are thinking about that, Egret. Egret would be very nice to plop onto a Swordsman to get past it, but we can play around it, use some smart play, swap the Swordsman away to Archives or something. Problem solved. Not everything has to be dealt with uh, tech cards in your deck. You only have 45 card slots after all. Um, yeah, so with that said, let's look at another big change I made, which is the plus three Hyper Driver. This wasn't in my previous deck, and I have no idea why, because it really should be in any deck with three Dig Deals. There's, this is no question. Hyper Driver works so well with Dig Deal. And especially in this deck, it actually serves a dual purpose. Remember the downside of uh, Ormaqua being reset after a purge? Uh, well, if you are, say, you're up against a 7 strength wrap round or an 8 strength Shiashi, you need two whole turns in order to get virus counters back to challenge those ice during which time the court can easily score an agenda. However, if you have a hyper driver on the board, along with Beth Curing Chang, things suddenly change, because in those clicks, you can easily farm those virus tokens back up and be able to threaten the scoring server. So yeah, hyper driver allows you to recharge your Omaqua quickly, uh, albeit it being a one-use thing. There are three one-users in your deck, but this should be more than enough to tie you across the game. So yep, there you have it. This is the new and improved, Omaqua Au Revoir deck. I love all the ores. Uh, <laughs> yep, so back by popular demand, you are going to witness an Au Revoir deck in action. Sit back and enjoy. <laughs> Regardless of what my opponent's idea of archetype is, this is basically a nut envy ram for my deck. Double Au Revoir and Daredevil in your opening, plus an SMC for either the third Au Revoir or a Snitch, the one-off Snitch. That is absolutely nuts, I could easily get my combo up by turn 2 and the Daredevil up not long after. So 
this is just what like yeah this is basically you know a perfect starting and even though my opening hand doesn't have that much you know it's still good there's fan side there's a turning wheel for synergy there's film critic for obercarta and some money in daily casts very very good opening hand so i'm going to just uh, drop the SMC and the daily cast here. Usually you want to get an Au Revoir first, you want to get your economy engine going, but I do not want to reveal to my opponent that I'm running Au Revoir yet. Otherwise, they'll start icing up archives and I'll be forced to get the snitch. So this turn, I need to start thinking about what I want to do. I have another Au Revoir I want to get off my NVRAM, and I have one more click left, which, in which I can spend drawing. And this is very awkward as I draw into a sure gamble. I'm on four credits, I can't play the gamble unless I click for a credit. If I click for a credit, and I take the Au Revoir off the NVRAM, it means that I have to discard one card from my hand. And my hand is so good that I'm not willing to discard anything. I want the Fansite Colony combo, Film Critic is essential in this matchup, and Turning Wheel is a very key multi-access component. So I could not play the gamble this turn. Um, the other option was not uh, was to choose to not take Au Revoir off the NVRAM, but that's bad. I need to set up my money quickly, and to do that, I need to get all the Au Revoirs into my hand as quickly as possible. So yeah, uh, I was forced to do a, re a really odd turn here, where I took Au Revoir off, and then played two cards to my hand, the two cards being both Au Revoirs. I mean, I could play something like Artist Colony Fansite, but I really, really want to get this Au Revoir engine set up as soon as possible. Um, if you don't, you don't know what this deck is trying to do, because once you get an Au Revoir engine set up, you know, the rest, everything else falls into place. So my backup here, in case my opponent ice archives, was that I would pop the SMC for the snitch and then begins using the snitch and double au revoir combo. But instead, my opponent doesn't ice archives. They go for the rush, ice on the remote. They are clearly trying to push and they save very quickly. But that's fine. I'm more than happy uh, that my opponent's taking this line of play. This allows me to get my au revoir engine going. So now the big question I'm asking myself is, do I pop the SMC for Snitch or the third Au Revoir? Given that Snitch is a lot more important, I'm inclined to do that. But first, um, I'm going to get the Daredevil out because this Daredevil is actually the other main component, uh, the engine component of this deck. Um, if you have watched my previous Maven and Daredevil game, you will have noticed that this deck actually functions very, very slowly if you don't find the Daredevil quickly. Um, the draw is very essential and my opponent, by double icing the remote, actually dug himself in a very deep hole because this actually enables uh, my draw engine. And with this Daredevil and uh, Au Revoir combo, I can basically draw into the rest of my deck while gaining insane money. So yeah, my opponent basically set me up there. The only good news for my opponent is that uh, they aren't giving me free turning wheel counters while at it because this is a remote, it doesn't give turning wheel counters. So. Every single turn from now on, I'm going to get two credits and two cards. And I'm going to run HQ here, which is a mistake. Uh, I mean, I'm going to snitch and jack out, but I should have dropped the turning wheel first. Uh, here, I was just very concerned about getting my money up. This is why I went for HQ quickly. Then fo I followed up by the um, basic resources, fan side, because my opponent's rushing out. They are going to fast track and they say here, and I have Beth as well. Uh, my opponent's on 13 credits, so I get a free card. <laughs> Yeah, you know you're going to have a good day when, when the third Au Revoir just pops up like that. Well, this is going to be really awesome, isn't it? So I'm going to Daredevil here. I find a Hyper Driver, but no memory for it. This is where Degdeer comes into play, but I haven't drawn any of my three Degdeers just yet, so the Hydra will have to wait. Now I ask myself, can I go for the Nisei? Nope. Nope, <laughs> not today. Omaqua hasn't appeared yet, so I basically have to concede this agenda to my opponent. Um, Yeah. Well, that's a problem. Alright, um, if they get an agenda, I need to get something out of it, and this something will be none other than turning wheel counters. So, while my opponent spends the entire turn uh, getting the Nisei into the score area, I will be able to set up my turning wheel counters, and I have a fan site here. So, actually, yep, I'm gonna run here, I'm gonna jack out, okay. I'm thinking right now. I need to get my Omaqua set up so I can challenge the second Nisei. The fact that they use a fast track for the first Nisei tells me that they don't have another Nisei in hand. If they do, they must have mandatorily drew it, which is kind of unlikely. So we are going to get an SMC from the Daredevil draw. And now I'm thinking, okay, I have my engine, I have my money, I have my cards, but I don't have breakers. And if I cannot contest the remote, I might be in a lot of trouble with the 
uh, Nisei token out. So what I'm going to do here is to actually get the Dig Deer. This is going to serve two purposes. Firstly, it allows me to host a Hyperdriver to get a 7 click turn next turn. Secondly, it also sets me up to host an Ormaqua and start breaking ice. But of course, that's just the theory. In practice, I wasn't thinking that far ahead. When I made this Daredevil run here, I forgot about the Ormaqua. So I wasted one jack out there when I could have used my artist colony colony, sorry, to fetch uh, the Ormaqua. I guess in practice here, I was thinking um, with the Daredevil draw, I might draw manually into the Ormaqua, which uh, would really, I mean, yeah, uh, that would be really good. But obviously, uh, chances of that are low and I did not. So I'm just going to sack my fan side here for the Ormaqua, which is fine. There's not that many cards that I, yeah, I don't think there's any other use for my fan side here. So I really should have just fetched the Ormaqua with my fan side. And then now you... Now you can just witness for yourself how insane this engine is. On this hyperdriver turn, I was able to get up from 0 to 5 on the Ormaqua, which is um, well on my way to defeating most of the high strength ice that my opponent can pose against me. I do know that R&D is Chiashi, HQ is DNA Tracker, and the remote has a fair child 3 on the outer as the outermost ice. So all these ice don't fit really phase me at all. I'm now at 6 strength Omaqua, I can basically run any server except RD at this point. I even draw into my second hyperdriver on this Daredevil run. So I have all the money in the world, I have all the cards in the world, and I have a very good breaker. I'm basically unstoppable at this point, I think. But of course, uh Agon Fusion has tricks up its sleeve. I do not have Caprice Nisei uh Hard counters, there's no rumor mill or polop in this deck. I don't have an answer for Nisei token. That is something that my opponent has against me. And if I lose too many side games, they will still win. And finally, they have the ID ability, but I do have two E strikes in the deck, if you remember. I should be able to turn off Agon Fusion, but of course, that's pending finding the E strikes in the first place. Yeah, I'm not getting any luck with drawing those E-Strikes, so th that could be a problem. I also need to keep in mind uh, something, and that is Swordsman. It's not an ice that's commonly played, but um, if there's one ID you will see it in play, it's none other than Agon Fusion, which has the capacity to play all these tech ice against uh, various runners, such as Macrophage for Anarx, uh, Mother Goddess and uh, Excalibur for Criminals, and against my AI base deck, obviously. Um, Swordsman is going to do a lot of work, as I mentioned. My only answers to Swordsman are one-time answers in the Sacrificial Construct, which I have in my hand now. Um, you'll notice I went for HQ Deep Dig there, because I thought my opponent was digging uh, very heavily with the Jackson for the second Nisei. So I thought they might be holding agendas in hand, turns out they weren't. So, well, that's a couple of turning wheel counters gone to waste, but I'm still going to charge up my Omaqua, I'm still getting turning wheel counters from Jackouts, and I'm still getting money. So everything's still working out just fine. At this point, it really is on the owners of my opponent now to quickly close out the game and to rush out before I can uh, get too many turning wheel accesses because the ticking time clock is now on them and it's ticking down really, really quickly. As you can see in the chat box, my opponent is thinking out loud. What is my win con? How am I supposed to win against someone who has infinite money and infinite break ice breaking ability? So yeah, at this point, it's a bit tough for my opponent, but they do have outs. As I said, Caprice and uh, Nisei Mark II are cards that I cannot really defend against. And of course, um, Purging kind of destroys Omaqua as well. So if I were my opponent, I think a pretty good strategy right now would be to find a high strength ender run on the remote. Chiashi would be pretty perfect here. And then uh, spend one turn Purging, and then spend the next turn jamming an agenda. That is not really something I can contest uh, to a very, uh, very well, should I say. I get the E-Strike out right now because uh, I suspect that I have to ditch a lot of cards at this point. It's a bit premature, but I'm still going to do it anyway. And this hopefully should set me up in case my opponent decides to rush out quickly. At least I wouldn't have to spend a click later playing the E-Strike, a click which could go to contesting the remote instead. Another conscious gameplay decision I made on my part was to not run the remote, even though it was quite obvious there's an upgrade, probably Caprice, in there. Usually, if a server is cheap to bust through and there's a Caprice in there, you want to be actively contesting that remote even if there are no agendas because there's a chance you could lose a string of side games when they do jam an agenda in there. So you'd rather get rid of the Caprice sooner rather than later. And I do have all the money in the world, so I really should be doing that. There are two good reasons not to do that, however. Firstly, I want to leave the outer ice on the remote unrest. This will give me 
a lot of Daredevil triggers. I still haven't drawn through my entire deck yet. Um, I would like to do so before I need to start running through the R&D Chiyashi. The second reason is because I do have a turning wheel anyway, and it feels more consistent for me to farm turning wheel counters, which are a guaranteed thing if I run centrals, rather than to co contest the caprice on the remote, which is unreliable. I could, as I said, lose a string of side games, which would put me further back. Huh, so much for relying on side games, huh? Well, I really, really should have popped that hyperdriver. Not gonna make the same mistake again. I'm going to immediately hyperdriver my way through my opponent's scoring remote and try to contest the Caprice so that they can't just chain out with a three point agenda later. The good news is, um, because my opponent spent their whole turn uh, scoring the Nisei, I get relatively free access on Santros. And because they have fewer than 12 credits, they can't rest the Chiyashi on RD, giving me a free um, run on RD. While my opponent purges the Omakwa, I'm going to claim my free R&D run here. My opponent can't res the Chiyashi on R&D, and I'm going to spend some of my turning wheel counters. They don't use the Nisei token in reaction, and I get 5 accesses. A Komainu, a Future Perfect, which I host on Film Critic because I'm more than done with Psy games. Not going to have any more of that nonsense. Then there's an Obercata, which I happily steal. This is why I buffered my hand to 6 cards, um, so I don't have to worry about Obercata and a bunch of irrelevant other cards. So now, uh, that run boosted me from 0 to 6 points, putting me on match point. Um, you will have to note, however, that because my opponent purged last turn, I can't spend the next few clicks liberating the f uh, Future Perfect off the Film Critic. That would be a mistake, because then I'm giving my opponent uh, the scoring window to jam advance advance a 3-point agenda in the remote. What I should do here instead, which I did, was to um, do two runs, uh, a couple of runs on HQ, snitching them out and gaining Omaqua counters in the process. Uh, so I think I have three Omaqua counters here, uh, because my 4-click turn consisted of running, followed by uh, three snitches. And this allows me to contest the Caprice remote should my opponent decide to uh, be brazen with the jamming. I can pop Hyperdriver, do two snitch runs, and that will give me the five counters I need to contest uh, the Fairchild 3 on the remote. We fast forward to a turn later where I've collected a whole lot more turning wheel counters and I'm ready to go back into R&D for a double dip. My opponent is forced to rest the Chiyashi here and you notice that even though I, um, yeah, the important thing is I've finally drawn my last employee strike. So now I have no need to worry about Chiyashi's um, anti-AI effect anymore, I can let it uh, fire off. Uh, breaking it is very trivial with Omakwa, just 3 credits gets me in. My opponent can't do anything about it because my Omakwa is at a nice healthy 9 strength. So you see, um, if my opponent doesn't jam agendas on the Caprice the turn before, um, I can just snowball so far out of control, running HQ a bunch of times with Snitch and Turning Wheel gets me basically infinite credits, I have 68 credits as we speak, and I unloaded again a bunch of Turning Wheel counters to see 5 cards, my opponent finally caved in, used the Nisei counter to kill me. Um, but I'm more than happy to see Nisei counter go because this makes uh, my life very easy um, in terms of contesting the Caprice remote. They have used their trump card in the Nisei, I have not yet expended mine in the Hyperdriver, so I'm well ahead of my opponent. All I need to do here is to snitch 3 times on HQ, run R&D through the Chiyashi, but I don't see any agendas. Guess what? They were in hand. Um, the reason I did not run HQ to empty my turning wheel to see my opponent's hand, even though I suspected there were agendas there, was because um, I did not want my opponent to res the HQ ice. Once my opponent has ice res on HQ and R&D, I'm in trouble. Because that means I can no longer farm turning wheel counters by snitching, with both outer eyes rest. Now my opponent finally, finally finds their agenda, finally decides that now is the time to score, but it's way too late. I have almost 90 credits, yes, you heard that right, 9 0, 90 credits, a fully charged up Om Omakwa. I'm just gonna run the remote, 7 times. Say hello to my little friend, Hyper Driver. Let's see if I can win just one of these 7 Psy games.
So, successful demo, huh? Yeah, sure, it was. And honestly, a lot of it was down to um, my draw being really a best case scenario. I, my opener was godlike, you have to admit. Double Au Revoir that early on with the Daredevil drawn to the rest of my deck. That having and not having that is a huge is a world of difference. I mean, it's kind of like finding Laguna Velasco District first click versus not uh first turn. Sorry, uh, if your deck relies on Laguna, um yeah uh that allowed me to be able to set up my Breaker Suite in time. In time, meaning that uh right after my opponent scored the first Nisei, I was able uh to get. The Omaqua with the fan side, and then start wrecking face. Um, my opponent did not have the correct hate cards for this matchup. If they had CVS and or Swordsman, the whole game would have been completely different. So yeah, um, even though this exhibits the sheer power of Omaqua, don't forget, uh, this is the best case. In many other matchups, this might not, yeah, your mileage may vary. One important point to note is that you may have noticed that I won the game on a crazy surplus of credits. 81 credits. I don't even run Vamp in this deck. It makes me wonder. Do I even need Omaqua when there's an Infection AI Breaker that basically does the same job? It's none other than Maven. Maven does cost twice as much to break each subroutine. But if I'm ending the game on 81 credits, do you think, don't you think Maven would have basically done the same job? without needing the one influence and without uh, being susceptible to the likes of CVS and Swordsman. That's a very important thing to uh, keep in mind as you um, if you decide to play this deck because the Maven version might just be better um, uh, because uh, yeah, you don't actually need all this money after a while. Um, of course, the downside is that with Maven, uh, the runner actually has another out. A Glacier deck like uh, the likes of Egg Infusion can simply stack lots of ice and um, make it very taxing for you to run repeatedly through the Caprice remote to play Caprice side games. Of course, my deck would have one more influence, which could have been a polop that would have denied such a chance. So, a lot of testing needed to see whether Omaqua is really going to improve the deck or not. But for now, I pretty much enjoyed this game and the deck. Um, I remember watching Finding Nemo, that's one of the first movies I've ever watched as a kid. And one thing I always wondered to myself is how do Dory and Nemo stay on the turtle when they get transported through that raging current? And well, after playing this deck, I might have some insight to this. Uh, turtles, they all start off very small and very tiny, unable to do much, but it doesn't take long for them to grow and be a force to be reckoned with. You, I mean, unlike in the picture, you don't need that many turtles to be effective, just one will do. Accompany it with a hyperdriver, and you are gonna see yourself driving through the oceans and able to bust through any obstacles in your way. It's that amazing. And Dorian Nemo themselves, well, you can say that they are daredevils, but um, I'm sure they feel safe because they have all the sacrificial constructs in the world backing them up. Thanks for watching and happy net running! Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.